This video is in response to the way of the master's request for questions from atheists. They said they weren't going to answer the questions from the great big boar, such as where did Cain get his wife, because apparently those questions have been answered before. Although I have to say I've never heard a satisfactory answer to that question, but it's their show and they can answer or not answer what they like. Frankly, I think if I were them, I wouldn't want those questions floating around unanswered because it creates the impression that they can answer them, but that's their choice. So, anyway, I thought about it, and I think I've come up with a question that I've actually always had about Christianity that maybe they, as Christians, can answer. It's really a very fair question, so I'm going to give a little background about the question, and then I'll ask it. If they decide to answer, they can edit this however they choose, so the rest of this video I'll be addressing directly to them. Gentlemen, often when atheists ask Christians why they believe the Bible is true and why they feel justified in accepting it as factual, several points will be brought up. For example, a skeptic may point out that several texts were rejected for inclusion in the Bible in committee, and many of these rejected apocryphal books contradict the books that were selected for inclusion. One argument theists will make is that God would not have allowed untrue texts to be included and true ones to be rejected, so these men must have been acting under God's guidance. Another challenge to the Bible is often that the claims in the Bible are extraordinary claims, such as claims about the afterlife and claims about miracles and resurrection. The skeptic will ask what evidence is there for these claims. There are two common answers. The first is the assertion that faith is all the evidence one needs. The second is to refer to eyewitness testimony of the events. None of this is satisfactory to a skeptic, but that's not the point I'm trying to make, and it doesn't relate to my question. Please bear with me, I'm coming to that. The Quran was not written by committee. It too claims to be the inspired word of God. It too has claims of miracles. It too describes the afterlife, and there are eyewitness accounts of Muhammad's resurrection. And it too can claim support from the faith of its followers. All of these are arguments Christians use to support their belief in the Bible, yet the same arguments are made for the Quran, and Christians reject the Quran's validity. Atheists reject the Quranic claims on the grounds that there may be confirmation bias, mass hallucination, an appeal to popularity, or any of several other potential fallacies involved. So here's my question. On what internally consistent basis do you accept biblical claims of Jesus' divinity, assertions about his miracles, and the Bible's position on salvation and the afterlife, while rejecting contradictory claims from the Quran, which can use the same arguments to support their position that we should accept Quranic claims? Thank you.